Tash Dili and welcome to class 11 biology. So in earlier class we talked about what is living, what are the characteristics of living and also categorize those characters into defining and non-defining characteristics. Well, in today's class we are going to talk on the topic diversity in the living world. And here we'll focus mainly on taxonomy and taxonomic categories. Let us first look at the instructional objectives of this class. So by the end of this class, you'll be able to define biodiversity, examine the need of classification, nomenclature and identification, explain universal rules of binomial nomenclature, define systematic taxonomy, explain taxa, write the taxonomic categories in ascending order, and the last, explain the pattern of taxonomic hierarchy. Okay, so when you look around, you see a diversity of a life form. And this life form, they survive, they thrive in again diversity of condition. And those organisms are also found in a very harsh environmental condition like very hot temperature or very cold temperature. Okay, so of course in favorable temperature or the condition also we find diversity of living organism. Okay, so all these living organisms, they are diverse, they are different. Okay, so each different organism we grouped into uh, okay, so we grouped into a particular groups called as species. So species are a group of related organisms. So all the related organism, okay, when they are able to interbreed freely and produce a fertile offspring, then we call these related organism as species. So here the definition is species are a group of related organism which can interbreed freely in nature and produce a fertile offspring. Okay, so like species, okay, we know the species, human being as a species, homo sapiens, dogs, cows, wolves, okay, yak, all the organisms, okay, so the listed, uh, which I have listed, they are different species. And in a species, you have number of individuals. Okay, so the species are a group of related organisms and when they interbreed, they produce a fertile offspring. Okay, so if two organisms, okay, if they, if two organisms belonging to different species, to belonging to different species, they cannot interbreed. But there are some exceptions like donkey and horse. If they interbreed, horse and donkey, they both belong to different species. Okay, if at all, if they interbreed, they produce a young one, but that young one is a sterile. Okay, that is exception. Otherwise, what happens is a species, okay, consists of a group of related species, okay, organism, which can reproduce freely. Okay, and then produce a fertile offspring. So, these number of species present on the earth, okay, forms a varieties of life. Okay, and we give it a term called as biodiversity. So, biodiversity is a variety of living organism on earth. Or we can say these are the numbers and type of organism present on earth. So, the life in a different forms. Different forms. Okay, so in different forms of life on the earth we call it as biodiversity. So, till now, the number of species that are known and described, it range between 1.7 to 1.8 million. So you can see it's a very huge number. Okay, so the number of species recorded on the earth till now it range between 1.7 million to 1.8 million. So you can see a number of species present on the earth. And also everyone wants to learn about the species. But it is is it possible? Okay, all species at a time, at one time, it may be difficult. Okay, so if you want to learn about the species, first of all, you must relate, you must name them. You must name them. Okay, and we know, 
the name of various organism around you in your local name okay for example okay around you you may have a uh, uh, mango tree you may have banana tree you may have apple tree so these are known by okay local names from different part of the world okay and we also try to explain the feature we try to explain the feature the descriptive feature okay and link them to the name so these different names in different part of the world creates confusion so that is why the scientists have devised a rule okay which will enable us to know the particular organism with one name okay that is called as nomenclature so nomenclature is nothing but it is the scientific naming of organism according to an established system so this naming scientific naming is very important the scientific naming okay will give a specific name to a particular organism so that it will avoid confusion ambiguity okay and it will lead to better processing of information and understanding of a particular organism or a species carol linnaeus or carl von linne okay it's a british sorry swedish uh, swedish naturalist and he devised binomial system of nomenclature in his book called philosophia botanica in 1751 so this is a picture of linnaeus and the book here okay so in this book he okay explain about the binomial system of nomenclature so nomenclature as you know is a naming scientific naming of an organism okay and this naming is based on certain uh, okay criteria or you can say established system so it is helped or guided by certain codes so let us look at some of the codes here so the rule of nomenclature are framed and standardized by five separate codes okay so for different group of organism okay we have different codes first international code of botanical nomenclature that is icbn okay so this is used by okay name uh, for the nomenclature or or naming of the plants so second one is international code of zoological nomenclature okay iczn for animals and then international code of bacteriological nomenclature okay this is for bacteria and next international code of viral nomenclature that is for virus and next international code of nomenclature for cultivated plant okay so the, for the cultivated plants again we have a different code here so these are the different codes okay which provides a guideline for the nomenclature and the type of nomenclature okay in the history there have been various types of nomenclature but the most accepted one is binomial nomenclature devised by linnaeus okay so if you look at this code help in avoiding error duplication confusion and ambiguity in scientific name so the, this is a function of the code here now if you look at the binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature devised by linnaeus okay so binomial name is a by two okay so the name of a species consists of two words okay so here i have given an example of a okay mango okay plant that is mango the scientific name of mango is mangifera indica lin so if you look at this the first one you can see is mangifera this is one word and this is another word so that is binomial nomenclature so let us see in uh, binomial the rule or you can say the universal rule of binomial nomenclature is that the name consists of two words as you can see mangifera indica and the first word represents generic name mangifera is a generic name indica is a species specific epithet okay so this is binomial nomenclature so mangifera indica and this species is followed by a name of scientist or author who first described it here it is lin it refers to linnaeus okay so it is the author or the scientist who described this particular species or particular plant for the first time so here the scientific name of mango is mangifera indica likewise we have for rice okay oryza sativa 
okay so there are various name uh, various uh, examples you can give so this is one such thing and then again another rule here you can see is that okay so this is generic name the first word of the generic name here it starts with capital letter the first word of the generic name starts with capital letter and the first word of this okay here mangifera indica the first letter of the generic name first letter of the generic name starts with capital letter and the first letter in specific epithet it starts with small letter okay this is another rule now next if you look carefully you can see okay it is written in italics italics so if you write any name scientific name if you type them if you print them it must be okay uh, okay print it in italics so you can see this is italics this is not italic you can you can see the difference here so it has to be printed in italics and if you write it down on your paper okay if it is handwritten then these two names that is the two words must be underlined separately mangifera underlined and indica underlined separately okay so this name you need not uh, okay underline this so this italics or you can say the underlined word okay indicates that these letter are latin okay they are latin latin word okay so all the names in the okay naming of the scientific naming it must be in latin latin okay language it must be in latin language so as to indicate it is latin okay so it is printed either in italics or it may, must be underlined separately Okay, so Mangifera indica. So the first rule is that binomial nomenclature, binomial nomenclature consists of two words. Okay, the first one indicates generic name, second one indicates specific epithet. That is one thing. And second one is you can see that okay, the first letter of the generic name is capital letter, and the first letter of the specific epithet is small letter. Okay, so Next is, of course, this is uh, followed by name of the author. And next is, they are printed in italics. Or if it is handwritten, they are underlined separately to indicate, okay, it is Latin word. Of it, or if it is not Latin, okay, it has to be Latinized. So that is the rule. So let us look at this one I have listed here. So biological names are generally in Latin and written in italics. The first word in the gen a biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet. Okay, so third one is both the words in biological name when written are separately underlined. Okay, or if it is printed, it must be printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. Next, the first word denoting the genus starts with capital letter while the specific epithet starts with the small letter. Okay, so this example we have already studied, Mangifera indica here. Okay, then next, the name of the author appears after the specific epithet and it is written in, written in abbreviated form. So here, Mangifera indica, Lin, it indicates that, okay, Linus was the one who first described it. Described it. Okay, so now it is very important that we should give the name and the name should be in a scientific way. Okay, so scientific or you can say the scientific naming, okay, the most accepted one is binomial nomenclature devised by Carlos Linnaeus. Okay, now again, it's very challenging to study all the organisms. It's very all, uh, okay, challenging to study all the organisms and also describe their particular features. So it becomes necessary that we should classify them. We should group them into a very convenient okay categories and that is what we call it as classification so classification is the process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters okay so let us look at a very simple example here so in this example you can see that all these diversity of living form they are grouped together they are grouped together under Okay, classification category of plant. Likewise, we have okay a group of these animals having a similar feature. Okay, and they are grouped, they are named or grouped under 
a category of frogs. Lastly, you can see a variety of beautiful fish. Isn't it? They look different, but there are similarities. That is why they are grouped. They are classified under one category fish. So, since studying each and every organism is very difficult, it's very challenging. Okay. So, we classify, the scientists classified all the living organism into groups, into categories based on certain criteria, certain observable characters in them. Okay. So, this classification becomes very important. Now, in this classification, the scientific terms for these categories here, I have categorized these, all these organisms here into a category of plant, a category of drug, a category of fishes. So, each organism has its own place. Okay. So, plant under plant under dog under fish here. Okay. So, each category, each category here, plant, dog, fish, we call them as taxa. So, the scientific term for these categories is called as organism. Sorry, categories of an organism is called as taxa. So, the scientific term for these categories of organism, we call it as taxa. For example, plant, dog, fish. Okay, so these taxa can indicate categories at different levels. So, there are different levels, so that we shall discuss under another topic. Okay, here let us just look at a simple example here. For example, okay, so the words like animals, mammals, and dogs. Okay, each one is called as taxa. They are all taxa, but they are at different categories. For example, dog at the Okay, bottom here, dog are mammals and these mammals are animals. So, you can see dog, mammals and animals, they are at different levels. Dog, mammals and animals are different levels and all of them are called as taxa. Okay, so they represent taxa at different levels. So, uh, the, okay, um, illustration will be given, okay, in the next uh, topic. Now, why do we need to classify as already discussed to make the study okay, of the organism easier and better and also identification. So, whenever we talk about any organism, it's very important that we should describe them. The description of an organism, we call it as identification so that we can link the name with that of a particular organism. Okay. So, the second need, okay, a second reason why we should have to classify is it reveals the interrelationship among different group of organisms. Okay, so this different group of organism, we can find their relationship. Okay, next, it also gives information about the organism and fossils of other localities in different places. You have organism, but they may belong to the same group. Next, it describes evolutionary relationship. As we know that living organism undergoes evolution. Okay, some of the organisms are already extinct, some of our, them are, okay, evolved into uh, other diverse form. Okay, so if you look at, uh, okay, if you study the classification of this organism, we can easily link the evolutionary relationship. Okay, so these are the need for classification. Our next topic is taxonomy. So, till now what we discuss is, we discuss that there, uh, okay, uh, there are variety forms, varieties of life form on the earth and these varieties of life form, we call it as biodiversity. And this biodiversity consists of variety of species, okay, uh, and the number of uh, species described is from 1.7 to 1.8 millions. Okay, and these species, to study them, okay, First of all, we name them, we know them in our local language. And then later it became very important that okay, it has to have a single name. So there are various quote and then we have a binomial system of classification and this binomial system of classification, it helps us to giving a name or, or to a species with two words. Okay, and then again, this nomenclature again. Okay, when you give the name, of course, we should describe the organism. So, that is identification. Identification, the organism, description of the organism must link with that of the okay, nomenclature so that we know which organism we are talking about. And since it's difficult, it's challenging to study all the living organisms on the earth, it becomes important to classify those organisms into categories. 
into various okay groups and such a category is we call it as taxa okay now next keeping all these things in mind we have a term called as taxonomy so taxonomy is a branch of science or you can say it's a branch of biology which deals with characterization studying about the characters of these living organism characterization okay that is the characteristic features of the organism okay we look at the similarities dissimilarities what are the characters present in that organism and next is identification to so identify you give a proper description of the species and then nomenclature that is naming scientific naming and classification of organism okay so taxonomy is a branch of biology or science which deals with characterization identification nomenclature and classification of organisms and this term was first coined by a b d cantol now next after which after which we have a modern system of okay uh, taxonomy wherein they take uh, they keep uh, the cellular structure into consideration cellular structure internal metabolism and so on okay so we have another term that is systematics systematic was first used by linnaeus in his book systema naturae and systematic deals with taxonomy okay that is what we have already discussed taxonomy which discuss, okay deals with characterization identification nomenclature and classification and after studying this we also okay the systematics also studies the evolutionary relationship evolutionary relationship okay and these are all based on comparative anatomy ecology physiology and biochemistry so systematics deals with taxonomy and evolutionary relationship based on comparative anatomy ecology physiology and biochemistry so this was again of course explained first used by okay linnaeus so that is why linnaeus is known as father of taxonomy and father of systematic botany okay next we will talk about taxonomic categories so as you know that all living organism must be classified into certain categories okay and each category we call them as taxa like this so we have categories here from the bottom we can see and then here okay so we have this is one group this is another group another group and so on and within that group again you can find various groups here okay so this taxonomic categories and this taxonomic categories here you can see that it's not a single one it is a multiple step here so there are various tax categories at various levels different levels we can see here okay so if these levels all together each one is category the species is category genus is category family is category order is category okay class is category phylum and kingdom these are all the categories taxonomic categories okay at different levels so these taxonomic categories all together from species to kingdom constitute a taxonomic hierarchy okay so taxonomic category is a group here you can see species is a taxonomic category this is category category okay and all these from species to kingdom okay it constitute a taxonomical hierarchy hierarchy okay so here the classification involves hierarchy of steps it is not a single step okay it has various step and each step we call it as taxonomic category or level or we can say rank and these categories all together we call it as taxonomic hierarchy and each category we call it as taxon each category we call it as taxon for example mammalia mammalia is a taxon mammalia is a taxon so mammalia okay so this is a category class so this class okay contain okay number of organism here and one such group is called mammalia so mammalia become a taxon okay so let us talk about this one by one starting from the lowest one okay and we'll go okay from species to genus and then this is the ascending order if you go from species to kingdom it's the ascending order and if you go from kingdom to this 
species that is dissenting order because kingdom is the highest level and species is the lowest level of okay taxonomic hierarchy okay so species so species are nothing but as we have already discussed in early class that is a group of individual organism with fundamental similarities okay for example species of dog and they can interbreed and produce a fertile offspring so a group of individual organism with fundamental similarities which can interbreed in nature and produce a fertile offspring we consider them as a species okay some example i have given is panthera leo that is lion panthera tigris that is tiger and panthera patus leopard Felis, Canis are some of the organisms belonging to different species. Okay, Felis scatters, Canis lupus. Okay, so here Fel, so uh, Felis. Okay, there are species like Catus, Cat, Felis lupus. Okay, or Felis familiaris. That is talk are some of the organisms they belong to different species. Okay, and if you take example from plants, Solanum melongena. Okay, that is brinjal, and Solanum tuberosum. That is potato. Again, they are two different species. So I have given some examples here, like Leopanthera, Leotigris, Leopardus, Felis catus. As uh, okay, that is Solana melangena. So species. So in this, we know that in the scientific name, we have two words. That is Panthera leo here. So the first one denotes generic name, and this is species epithet. So leo is a species specific epithet. Tigris is a specific epithet. Pardus is a specific epithet. Catus is a specific epithet, and so on. okay. So this at the lowest level of classification we call them as species. Now next level is genus. So genus comprises of a group of related species which has more character in common in compared to species of other genera. Okay. So for example, let us say here Leo panthera, Leo tigris, sorry, uh, panthera Leo, panthera tigris, and panthera pardus. Okay, they are grouped. These are the related species. Okay, looking at looking at certain character, they are placed under a same genera. So genus. So genus comprises of a related related species. Okay. So Panthera, Leo, Panthera tigris, Panthera patus. These all belong to same genus. Okay. We have another genus like uh, okay Felis catus. So Felis catus here it belongs to Felis. It belongs to Okay, the cat belongs to another genus. Lion, tiger, and leopard they belong to same genus. Okay, and then uh, of, of cat belongs to another genus. Okay, likewise in the case of plant, we have brinjal and uh, potato. Okay, even though they belong to say a different species, these are two different species, but they belong to same genus that is Solanum. Okay, next family. So family consists of a group of related genera. So genera having a okay similar properties or similar character. Okay, we still necess okay number of similarities as compared to genus and species. But okay, there are similarities. They are kept under same family. For example, here the family Felidae. Family Felidae. Okay, it consists of a related genus like Panthera and Felis. So panthera and felis are different genus, but at the level of at the category of family, they put they are put under same category that is felidae. Okay, are you getting it? Likewise here, canidae here, canis. Okay, dogs, and then fox. Okay, they are different genus, but under family they come into same category. Likewise, in the case of okay, plants, solanum, petunia, and tadura. These are three different genus. But at the family level, they come together under Solanaceae. Okay, so family consists of a related genera, genus or genera. Next, order. So order is assemblage of family which exhibit a few similar characters. So order contain again a number of family having a okay similar character. For example, here in the early okay topic that is under family, okay Felidae and Canidae are. Uh, they belong to different categories. Okay, at the level of family, they are okay separate. But when it comes to order, they come together under carnivora, flesh eating. Here, 
Okay, so Felidae and Canidae, they belong to same order that is, okay, Carnivora. Likewise, in the case of plant like Convoluisae, Solanaceae, okay, these two, okay, even though they belong to different genus, okay, but they belong to same order that is polynomial. Next class. So class class contains a related orders. So in earlier okay topic we have carnivora. Now here uh, class mammalia. This is a class mammalia. It contains related orders like carnivora and primata. Carnivora and primata are uh, okay different groups at all at the level of order, but they are place under same class that is mammalia. So mammalia are a group of organisms having body, hair and mammary gland. Next, phylum. Okay, in the case of uh, animal, we use phylum. In the case of plant, we use division. So this consists of, okay, so phylum consists of animals like fish, amphibian, reptiles and birds along with the mammals. Okay, so phylum here, the example given is chordata. And this chordata are the one, okay, this phylum chordata, okay, include all the animals, all the animals having notochord, okay, notochord is nothing but the rod shaped structure at the back. And in the case of mammal, in the case of, uh, okay, mammals like us, this notochord is evolved into vertebral column. And then there's a dorsal hollow, hollow neural system, okay. So organism having such a feature are placed under chordata, chordata. So here, the class, the different classes like Mammalia, Reptilia, Pisces, Amphibian and Reptilia, all these are separate at the level of class. But when it comes to phylum, okay, we all belong to same category, that is Chordata. Next, Kingdom. So all the animals, whether having a backbone, that is Chordata or not, all the animals, they are placed under again a common category called as kingdom. So here in this at the kingdom level, you know, it is animalia. So all the animals of various phyla, okay, various phyla like Chordata, Arthropoda, Annelida, and so on, Echinodermata, and so on. These are all placed under animalia at the kingdom level. Whereas in the case of plant, all the plants whether it is vascular or non-vascular, water or land, all the plants are placed under plantae at the level of or at the category of kingdom. Okay, so this is the highest level of classification. So when we talk about classification, we move from species to kingdom. And when we move from species to kingdom, we call it an ascending order. So here let us say species to kingdom. If you look at the pattern here, if we move in ascending order from species to kingdom, you will find, okay, the similarities, lesser in number, okay, lesser similarities. And if you move from kingdom to species, more similarities, okay. So, in this taxonomic hierarchy, it is very important that you should know these categories in a sequence or you can say uh, ascending order or descending order sequentially. So, K, P, Okay, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So you must know it, okay, without any mistake. So as to, okay, remember them in sequence, okay, we have a mnemonics like K, kingdom, okay, kindly pay cash or furnish good security. Okay, once again, kindly pay cash or Furnish good security. So if you know this sentence, then you can easily write this category in sequence without any mistake. Okay, now one last uh, now last thing that is taxonomic hierarchy. Let us look at this example and then again try to analyze what we have discussed. Okay, so at the bottom, okay, at the lowest level, species level, there is a canis lupus. Canis lupus. Okay, it's a wolf. It's a wolf. Okay. So at the canis lupus, at the species level, all the canis lupus are one species and then another organism, another organism. So we have different species. Now, are these related species are placed under a common genus like canis. So here, 
at the species level we have wolf now if you come here you can see wolf and dog here and then wolf dog and other such organisms other such genus okay when they are related they are placed under a common family called as canidae so in this we can see wolf dog and fox okay so at the genus level wolf and fox are different separate category separate group we can say okay but at the family level they all okay come together likewise again if you go higher up the category higher up the hierarchy that is order carnivora you will find okay some more organism like here we can see mm, uh, let us say cat here okay and then you can say bear and other organisms so it includes all the organism eating okay flesh here carnivora okay so at this group so you can see that if you look at the characteristic feature okay there is less common here the common character decreases and if you look here okay and compare with this you will have more common character likewise here and likewise here here you have all the wolves here okay so the carnivora is one okay a group of organism okay which is placed under order here and then there are other orders too okay so this order different or okay orders are placed under okay mammalia okay related orders are placed under a same class okay so here the example okay is mammalia here now different classes having a similar character okay so let us say having a backbone they are all placed under a common or you can say same phylum here it is chordata so those having backbones so you can see all the organism having backbones are okay they belong to same group at the category of phylum okay next now all these organism all these phylum okay all these phylum different phylum are placed under again a same kingdom called as animalia so in this animalia you find organism with backbone as well as without backbone so all these organisms belong to kingdom animalia okay so if you look at here you can see that there is less of similarities among all these organism and more of differences and if you move down you will see more similarity as compared to this for example here if you look at the similar feature these are all animals okay but again it consists of both having backbone and without backbone here okay so at the level of phylum you find organism having only backbone now when you still go down okay that is class at this class okay this particular class i am talking about a mammalia other than mammalia there are other classes other than phylum chordata there are other phylum okay that you must understand so under the class mammalia you find only those organism which have a body hair okay you can say fur and mammary gland okay and then you move okay still further down okay and carnivora you find only such group okay of related organism okay which eats okay flesh like okay dogs and cats you can find here and then you move down okay <coughs> canidae you find only dog family here okay canidae is also called as dog family where you have dogs wolves fox and so on and then you just move down so as you move down you find more of a similar character okay more of a similar character if you move up the similar character decreases so that's all about today's class that is taxonomical hierarchy so what we have learned is first we learned about taxonomy okay uh, that is uh, taxonomy which involve characterization nomenclature so in this nomenclature we learn about various codes and also binomial nomenclature devised by levi as or linnaeus okay and then we talked about identification we talked about classification so when we talked about classification we encounter a term called as taxa okay and then we talked about taxonomical hierarchy okay which consists of various groups so starting from okay the highest that if you talk, talk about, uh, from uh, let us say ascending order let us go ascending order that is species genus family order class phylum and kingdom okay so phylum usually used for animals and division used for plants when we talk about the classification of plant we use division okay so taxonomy 
And then we have systematic taxonomy, wherein they take into consideration, along with the taxonomy, the evolutionary relationship. So that's all for today's class. Okay, we'll see in the next class. Thank you.